So how ADHD medications work? Well, I know that you got a review of this this morning, so we'll just go over this very quickly. This is a schematic of one brain cell toward the next. You have an electrical impulse coming down the nerve cell or the axon. And then there's a gap there, the synapse, before the next nerve cell. And there are little vesicles or little holders that have little brain chemicals, neurotransmitters, like dopamine, norepinephrine, and others. And when the electrical signal comes, they release the neurotransmitter to jump across the cell. It binds to the receptor, which opens up a little channel there, and sends the electricity down. And then our cells like to recycle, and so they take those neurotransmitters and put them back into the cell, and they either reuse them or break them down if they're past their due date, so to speak. So when we look at the neurotransmitters, they're the little chemical messengers that jump across the synapse. We've got dopamine, which is very involved in ADHD. It's also implicated in depression and psychosis, psychotic conditions. Norepinephrine or noradrenaline, those words can be used interchangeably. ADHD, as well as depression and anxiety. And serotonin is predominantly depression and anxiety. And serotonin doesn't seem to have a big impact on ADHD. So if somebody's on a serotonin-type medicine like Prozac or Zoloft or whatnot, it doesn't have a big impact on ADHD. It may help the depression and anxiety symptoms, but not the ADHD. So even though I show one nerve cell, this is just a schematic to show that there are, you know, 1,000 to 10,000 axons connecting into each nerve cell. That this is an incredibly complex network, and I know you saw a slide earlier with Dr. Brown looking at that as well. So I'm showing the simple version to make sure that we understand it and get it, though it is, our brain is incredibly complex. So how ADHD medications work? So they essentially block the reuptake. They block that little transmitter, sorry, transporter pump that sucks the dopamine or norepinephrine back up into the other cell. So what happens is when the first signal comes down, we've got dopamine in the synapse, and then it doesn't get recycled back, so it stays there. And then the next signal comes, and we've got more dopamine released, and then it stays there. And part of what happens is it's kind of like turning up the volume of the signal. Now you can actually hear what's going on or pay attention to what's going on because you now have more dopamine there as the messenger to amplify that signal. And they work on dopamine and norepinephrine. Uh, I don't think I've got a slide on this, but I just want to use this analogy that's often very helpful for people. Um, you, you know the old radios, not the new ones where you just press the button, it goes 0 0.1, 0 0.3, 0 0.5, but the old radios where you turn the dial and it's fuzz, 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 and you've got the little red line there, and you try and go along until you find a signal, particularly important back before CD players and tape players and cars, and you're driving in a new area, you're trying to find a radio station to listen to. So you're, you're turning the signal, you're, you're turning the dial, and you're hearing fuzz, 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 and then you hear a radio station, right? But you go past it, of course, right? So you come back, and you try and narrow in on that signal. To be able to hear that radio station well, you need two things. One, there's got to be a strong enough signal from that radio station, right? That signal's got to be loud. Secondly, you have to have not a lot of static on that channel, right? You, if there's too much static, you can't really hear that radio station either, even if it's loud, right? So we need two things, a louder signal and less noise around it. Does that make sense? You guys with me? Good. So when it comes to ADHD medicines, the medications that boost the dopamine make the signal louder. So if a kid's got to do math homework that's really boring, when they take their medication that boosts the dopamine, they can focus on that page and get the work done. And it becomes interesting and stimulating. When medicines boost the norepinephrine or the noradrenaline, that helps to dampen the noise around them. So then the other kid next to them making the binders, you know, and shuffling papers and chatting, they can ignore that noise around them, sort of like our radio station, louder signal, less noise. And those, that's kind of, in a nutshell, what the medications do to improve ADHD symptoms.